The Dallas Mavericks just punched their ticket to the NBA Finals. They blow out the Minnesota Timberwolves. It only ends up being a 21-point win, but it was ugly. Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving came out from the get-go and said, what's a game six? We don't know about game six. We end in this one in five. They take down the Timberwolves four games to one and are advancing to take on the Boston Celtics in the NBA Finals. Luka Doncic had 20 points in the first quarter of this game. He, I don't think he missed a shot. Or excuse me, I don't think he missed a three until the very last minute of that quarter. And every shot he made, nothing touched the rim. Nothing touched the rim. Everything was nothing but net. He finishes with 36 points, 10 rebounds, five assists. Kyrie Irving also scores 36 points, gives you four rebounds and five assists as well. This backcourt has played beyond the level that I was expecting. And I had high expectations for them, but what they've been able to put together in this series against the number one defense in the NBA in Minnesota has been nothing short of spectacular. I mentioned it in the, the last video that I posted that Minnesota's threw everything at them um, in game three and game four, every type of coverage that you could throw at Luka and Kyrie. They're, they're playing drop coverage and they're playing up at the level of the screen and they're trapping off the screen and they're doubling. They're, they're trying to play up at the level of the screen. Like, Nothing works. There's no answer right now to Luka alone. And then when Kyrie gets it going, there's no answer for him either. It is it is hell for a team to have to defend just one of those guys. So to have two of them playing at this high level, it, it speaks volumes for just the patience that Nico Harrison had when he made that trade. Uh, because I was one of the people that thought that it was not the best idea to pair Luka and Kyrie together. And I dogged them a lot. Coming out of last season, obviously not even making the playoffs, you know, missing the play-in tournament entirely. Um, but credit where credit is due. Um, they went around, they revamped their roster, they built themselves an identity on the defensive side of the ball, um, which again is a huge credit to not just Nico Harrison, the GM out there, but also Jason Kidd, who's coached a hell of a playoff run so far. Daniel Gafford and Derek Lively, the Twin Towers are just, they're playing phenomenal basketball on the defensive side of the court and on the offensive side of the court. Gaffer and Lively are both huge rim threats. Their presence on the inside can't be understated. And Lively's playmaking has been huge for them. Um, this entire playoff run, um, he finishes up in this one with three assists. But again, just the passes that he makes, the, the connecting player that he can be on those short rolls is huge for just the flow of that Mavericks offense, especially when teams are trying to just get the ball out of Lucas and Kyrie's hands and sending two bodies at him off of those high screen actions. Um, for the Mavericks as a whole, again, they just were on go from start to finish in this one. Um, it was ugly at halftime. It was a huge, huge uh, halftime lead. They scored 69 points in the first half. It felt eerily reminiscent of Luka Doncic against the Suns in that elimination game where they embarrassed Phoenix on their home court. Something about... You know, we keep talking about Kyrie. Was He was undefeated up until game four uh, in elimination closeout games um, in his career. He had been 14-0. and 0, But we might have to start talking more about Luka in these closeout games because he just turns into a different animal. I mean, he was talking to the crowd. He's mean mugging people in, in Minnesota. He's talking to Snoop Dogg. He just – the energy, you can tell he wants it. He wants – his chance to get to the finals finally for the first time. And he's going to get that opportunity. Um, Want to put a bow really quickly on the Minnesota th side of things in this one. Um, Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards both finished up with 28 points, but was not the prettiest for Carl Anthony Towns. He struggled a lot. Earlier on, he started to find a couple of um, shots going in. He got to the free throw line. He was much more aggressive, which I will give him credit to. Um, at just getting downhill um, and trying to get easy baskets at the rim because he's struggled so bad from three the la these last few games. And he's really struggled from three this entire playoffs at home. I think he's shooting just around 25% from behind the arc um, in Minnesota in the playoffs, and that was no different tonight. He went one for six from three. Uh, Anthony Edwards has an efficient game, but, again, it just got so out of hand so fast. Their defense was – had no answer for, for Luca and Kyrie. And then it just became an avalanche once the lead really started to get going. 
PJ Washington knocked down some threes. Um, it, it just, there was nothing that they were really able to do on that side of the ball. Um, and what really is going to, I think, sting in the long run for Minnesota is in those first two games, you have great performances from Nas Reed, from Kyle, uh, Kyle Anderson, excuse me, from Mike Conley, and from Jaden McDaniels. And in those games, you get nothing. You're not getting what you need from your two stars in Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns. And game five was the first game that there was not a role player who stepped up to be a contributor. No one else outside of Cat and Ant hit double figures for Minnesota. So finally you get the two of them clicking and, and combining for, you know, almost 60 points and no one else can give you double digits. It just never synced up for them in this one um, and in this series as a whole. Um, but to put a ball on their entire season, huge, huge credit to what Minnesota was able to do. I think exceeded expectations. Uh, the run that Anthony Edwards put together this playoffs was special. Um, the discourse around it is going to be nasty, but stay off Twitter. It's, there's no reason to be dogging a 22-year-old for how he performed in this particular playoff series. He's young. He's going to get better. He saw a lot of that gap defense, which um, really slowed him down throughout this entire series against Dallas. He'll find ways to get better at finding counters to it. Um, it's what happens. It comes with time. It comes with experience. Uh, we say it on the podcast all the time. It's hard to be a young player and just break through immediately. You usually get to the playoffs and you get that first first real deep run and you you run into a buzzsaw somewhere along the way that ends up knocking you out and you build from it and you learn from that experience. Jason Tatum made the finals once and played poorly and he's back into the finals again to get a chance to redeem himself and the Boston Celtics. Luka Doncic, this is his second Western Conference Finals. He lost to the Golden State Warriors team in 2022 that ended up going on to win the finals. Here he found himself again back in that same position, and you can just see the mentality that he approaches with, how locked in he was, not just on the offensive side of the ball. We know the mastermind that he is there, but defensively, the effort that he was giving throughout the injuries, you see his knees bleeding every game. He's banged up. He's got a bad knee, bad shoulder. He's gotten hit in the face a bunch of the series. Just the grit, the heart, the want, the desire, because he's been there. He's experienced that pain. He wants to get over the mountaintop. And now here he is in his first NBA Finals. Um, Ant will get there. It's going to take time. He's only 22. This is a young team with, with promise. If nothing else, Ant is clearly, clearly a superstar. He has a case to be the best shooting guard in the NBA. Um, and so Minnesota can, can relish in that and continue to construct this roster around them, knowing that they got one of those A, 1A type guys on their team. Not going to give a full preview to the NBA Finals between Boston and Dallas because we're going to be recording, I believe, tomorrow or Saturday. So that's going to be a full video um, where we're going to really break down this entire uh, series between Dallas and Minnesota and look forward to the NBA finals, which is going to be starting next week between Boston and Dallas. So stay tuned for that. But I just want to leave you with a couple more things that I saw on Twitter that I want to want to address just some of the storylines that we have going into this finals. Because if you're a guy that, that likes the drama, honestly, th this finals have something for everybody. If you're a, an, an aesthetic guy, you like the tween, tween, hezzy, you got Luca, you got Kyrie, you got JT, you got JB. The shot making that we're going to see from both of these teams is going to be mwah, chef's kiss immaculate. If you love defense, you see what the what Dallas has been able to do on this playoff run, how they've really built themselves defensively but on the backs of guys like Derrick Jones Jr. and Daniel Gafford and Derek Lively. And we already know what Boston does with Drew Holiday and Derek White, JT, JB. Al Horford, guys that really will get, sit in the chair, defend. Chris Stapps is coming back, how he can provide a little bit more rim protection for them. Defensively, this series is going to be great. But on top of all that, you know, you like the drama, you know. We're going to see Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown or Luka Doncic get their first NBA championship. Kyrie Irving is looking to get his second championship, his first without LeBron, which – I think it's stupid, but a lot of discourse around his career sums up to, well, he only was able to get to that mountaintop and get that ring right in the coattails of LeBron. I don't subscribe to that idea, but 
He goes and does it without LeBron. You can't use that narrative anymore. Chris Stapps Porzingis is going to be playing against a Dallas Mavericks team where he's been on the record of saying he feels like he was underutilized. He just had to sit in the corner. He didn't, he didn't get to play to his maximum potential. And he, he's noted there was some level of immaturity, but the, it just didn't fit with him in Dallas. Vice versa, Kyrie Irving is going to play against Boston, and there's a lot of bad blood for Kyrie in Boston. You know, they had the, the incident where he wiped his shoes off on the, the Leprechaun logo in the middle of TD Garden. They're not going to want to see Kyrie's face in Boston. There's going to be a lot of boost for him off the tip-off in game one. And lastly, Jason Kidd is now looking to win an NBA championship, not only as a player for the Dallas Mavericks, but now also as a coach for the Dallas Mavericks. Um, script writers cooked. Uh, the script writers cooked. They put together a beautiful, beautiful NBA Finals matchup for us to, uh, to, to watch. And I am super, super excited for what is to come in the NBA Finals. I am going to be doing breakdowns after every single NBA Finals game. So continue to stay locked to the Off the Glass podcast channel. Um, if you enjoyed this video, like, comment, subscribe, follow us on the social platforms at Off the Glass Pod on Instagram and at Off the Glass Podcast on TikTok. And like I said, we will be putting out a full finals preview um, sometime tomorrow or Saturday. So stay tuned. Put the notification bell on so you won't be missed. Stay tuned to the socials. I'll be posting about it. And stay locked in, man. Enjoy the hoops. I'm out.